So with Basha Boutique, it sounds like you had Basha Enterprises to give a business under writing that. Can you tell us more about that and how you went through that process? Yes, yeah, so I finished with the international NGO in 2011, 2010. And I, you know, my background was public health and social work and I'd never done anything even vaguely business related before. I'd never even balanced my own checkbook. <laughs> and, so, and so I went to the US and to Oregon where I'm from and I spent six months reading every business book I could and write, working with an organization on a business plan and taking some classes. And so I went back six months later and started a business with 13 women sitting in one two room flat. and. And we got started. And, and this was back at the location where you'd been previously, is it? It was in Dhaka. In Dhaka, in, okay. Yeah, the capital of Bangladesh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we started with a different program that had, that had started there with women who were on the streets. Um, they were, many had come out of brothels or were being informally trafficked. And they'd gone through a year's training, but they weren't able to find employment. Um, the the issues that they have as trauma victims make it very hard for them yeah. to work. And so I, that's what I discovered was that they not only need a time of training and healing, they also need a supportive work environment where they're having ongoing services and, and uh, that are sensitive to the things that they're going through. Yeah. So, so multi layers of challenges. <laughs> yes, that yes. You're to work through. <laughs> I didn't quite realize what I was getting into, but as the business rolled out, it, was like, it seemed like an onion with layer and layer like and layer of issues. And many of the women really struggle to um, focus all day. Some women have issues getting along with other people, some psychiatric problems, some women are quite low functioning and cognitive issues and so just just those challenges on top of starting a business and and trying to produce a product at a high quality level with international demand so no challenges at all yeah no challenges at all <laughs> but you've been working your way through it though right yeah yes yes it was um <laughs> uh yeah still working through it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's probably just li like any any organization, mm -hmm. there's always ongoing challenges, but again, with the circumstances mm -hmm. you're in, you have uh, probably extra challenges than, than most places mm -hmm. would, yeah, certainly. Yeah, you're employing people who are unemployable, essentially, initially. And, but, but as it goes on, you have your layer of stronger employees who are able to pull up other people, and lots of the behavioral issues dissipated as well. What I always say is that the, the um, Characteristics that help a woman survive on the street are not the characteristics that are you exactly want in the workplace. Sure. So, so working on those things as well, professionalism and and all those issues have also been part of the thing. We provide ongoing training. Many of the women were completely illiterate when they oh. started their training program. And so we continue to give about an hour of class a day on literacy in their language, in English, basic English, life skills, health, hygiene, everything. Because so, we want the so, women to continue sure. to develop and continue to be strong. And people notice that when they come, that the yeah. women are really interactive and proud of themselves, proud of the work that they do. and. It's just, if you can see the women when they start and yeah. maybe even six months later, it's the it's amazing. Quite dramatic. Yeah, it's amazing to me as a previous social worker, the impact that a dignified job is and how transformative that is. It's amazing. Mm -hmm.